Hello, I'm Dorota Kwiatkowska from University of Silesia in Poland and Associate Editor of Quantitative Plant Biology. I will explain what is the Gaussian curvature or how to quantify the shape of a surface using these three examples. Gaussian curvature is a product of principal curvatures, which are the minimal and maximal curvature of curves that are at intersection between our surface and its normal planes. If in one of these directions, the surface is flat, as you can see here, then the Gaussian curvature is zero because one of the principal curvatures is zero. If it is not flat in both of the directions, then we have two cases. If the surface is concave in both or convex in both the directions, then its Gaussian curvature is positive. While if the surface is concave in one and convex in another direction, then the Gaussian curvature has a negative value. Gaussian curvature tells us how much the surface uh, differs from being flat. In other words, uh, it tells us uh, how what happens when we try to flatten the surface. We can use the triangles to approximate the surface. And in case of zero Gaussian curvature, these triangles make a flat piece of paper. If we remove one of the triangles and uh, glue the remaining edges, then we obtain the positive curvature case. But when we replace this triangle by the one that has wider angle, then we obtain the negative curvature case. How uh, the, curve, the Gaussian curvature is computed here? Uh, it is uh, computed by dividing the delta V which is the difference between the two pi and the sum of angles of the triangles that meet at the red vertex. And this is divided by the area of triangles associated with this vertex. So here we, we have the missing angle and that's why the delta V has a positive value and also the Gaussian curvature. While here, when we inserted the bigger triangle, we have a negative value of delta V because there is a kind of excess of the surface. How Gaussian curvature can be used in biology? Uh, the nice example is when we uh, look at the shape of the uh, short apical meristem, uh, which generates new primordia. We can recognize based on the elevated Gaussian curvature, the places where new primordia arise, but we can also recognize the future and already existing boundary between the primordia and meristem by negative Gaussian curvature value. Another example is that the Gaussian curvature can be used to compute mechanical stress in the meristem surface, like it has been modeled for the sunflower inflorescence. And it shows that mechanical stress can contribute to the regulation of morphogenesis. And that's all, thank you.